G'day, thanks for tuning in. Let's dig in and have a look at what's inside this Alexa Echo Dot. It's a really nice speaker, it's got quite a bit of weight to it, which makes me think it's got a decent speaker inside, or, or at least a big heatsink. The bottom is a nice rubber pad, just so when that sits on a surface it doesn't slide around, it's got nice friction there. The top is just a plastic, made of plastic cover. Got a couple of buttons, or a few buttons on top, and then the four little dots which I see my microphones, and the little channel around the outside which just has little LED lights. And then in between, just a cloth sort of fabric covering on top, which is also where probably the sound's gonna come out. And then we just have two ports, one's for the power, one's for 3.5 mil audio jack um, that can just be used as power out. So there's no visible screws on it, but I guess the bottom's probably gonna come out. And then there's going to be a few screws in there. So yeah, exactly as I thought. There's just a plastic bit that's over molded with this rubbery surface. Really nice, nicely done and, and comes off quite easy. So there is a, just a glue holding it on, on the outside, but nothing too strong. So it comes off pretty okay. And then it just has four, four screws or four holes for screws. And they're just torque screwdrivers, so just find the right size and dig in with this. So that's just a torque six. That seems to fit that pretty well. Okay, awesome. So undoing those four screws. Should I just take them out so I don't lose them? Undoing those four screws on the bottom, this whole plate just slides slides right off. And then as I mentioned before, we've got, yeah, okay, that's actually really interesting. So I thought there'd be perforations here throughout this, this bit here, but there actually doesn't seem to be any. So we can see this where with the light, there's also actually, or only actually perforations in this top little area here. Actually, no, sorry, that's gonna be the bottom. So this sits upside down. So yeah, so this is the way this sits on the ground. So that's actually on the bottom. So there's nothing on the top, We've only got this, all the, it is all the way around, but just on the bottom. So I think that's the only place the sound's gonna come out. And then I'm not exactly sure what this is. All Alexa seems to seem to have this. So if anyone actually knows what that is, please leave, leave a comment in the description. I'm curious to find out. It just, I reckon it's just a RFID tag or something like that, just to identify these without having to take them apart or maybe as they're being manufactured or so on. Awesome. So then undoing those screws, we can then just see, well, straight into the, I guess, brain box of it. Got a board here, which I think is just going to be all the power stuff coming in. There's a couple of capacitors, or one capacitor there, a couple of little reductors. And then we've got a ribbon cable there going to the actual speaker. And then around the whole side, we've got this really chunky bit of some sort of metal. It's just cast, roughly cast, and then it's just snapped off here. And that is just going to be the kind of two things. I mean, the main purpose of that is going to be heat dissipation. Again, this, this can generate quite a bit of heat. So this will heat up and dissipate that on the outside. And then also it acts as a really nice weight. This, this speaker really has a nice weight to it and feels really good in the hand. Not that you're holding it around and using it much, but it's still, it's still nice to, to kind of feel like it's quality and not just something cheap. But there's a bunch more screws here. So I'll undo those and keep digging through. I think as we remove this smaller PCB here and the, the speaker, we should find another PCB there where most of the processing probably actually gets done. There you go, so that comes out pretty easy and then we just have a ribbon cable going into its gut, so whatever else, there's gonna be something else in there. And this here, actually, yeah, there might be quite a bit of stuff here. So there's a lot of little surface mount components, same as, same as kind of what's on the other side. Not, nothing too special really to point out, a little inductor there, capacitor, and then yeah, just a, a whole bunch of little components. But then on this side as well, we've got, well, the actual physical power in and, and 3.5 audio jack. And then we've got this shield here and a thermal compound there. So that thermal compound contacts straight onto this, which transfers that heat again on, onto the heatsink itself. 
but underneath the shield is probably where the actual brain box is going to be. So the, the microcontroller or microprocessor, whatever they went to, to use. And that's probably just there to, to provide shielding for it. So they just want it nice and accurate sounds and no, no electronic interference. I can't actually see any tracks for an antenna or any antennas on here. So I'll guess that that's probably going to be on the other PCB there as we go further. So all right, I'll just actually... There's four screws, so there's, there's three screws, sorry, there's four screws here holding the speaker on, but then there's four screws deeper inside that probably hold this whole thing together. So I'll undo those first, we'll take this out and then see if we need to actually dig into the speaker. Because the speaker, my guess would be, is it's actually gonna be glued in there as well, so sealed in there pretty well. And the reason they do that is just for acoustics to, to provide optimum acoustics with, with controlling sort of the air around that speaker itself. Okay, so that actually, that's different. I thought that was gonna work, but that just lets the bottom bit go. And they're quite nice long screws. Although hard to get out because the magnetic field from the speaker actually holds them in place. Let's have a look at this first. That's interesting, that's a, that's a clear. Hmm, okay, so this whole thing is quite a complex part of, of metal as, as the heatsink. Then we've got this little window, it's just a clear window. Clear window that just shines, or shines, that just, just looks right down. I have no idea what that's there for. So really not sure what that window there is. If anyone knows or has any ideas, please do let me know. It does seem to be pretty sealed off. And I'm not sure, so on this side, what it's gonna to correspond to, it's just corresponding to this little area here. So there's nothing really there. There's a ground plane, not even lights. Okay, interesting. There you go, have another look. Leave a comment down below of what you think that is. Maybe someone will know. Awesome, and then the rest of this is just a plastic sort of case, I guess, that just holds things together and then we've just got the speaker there. So while we're here, might as well just dig in, see if we can actually open up the speaker and see anything else. But my guess is it's gonna be sealed in there so we probably won't be able to see all that much. I think that that speaker would have just actually been glued in on the side. So I'll just screw this back in so I don't lose those screws. And the screws there would just be to hold it in place a little bit extra, but also just while the glue or the adhesive, whatever they used, was actually setting. All right, so well, we can come back to the, the top side, and I guess this comes out. Oh, okay, it looks like some of these screws are actually broken. So that just sat on top here, and then it's got these screws. So it's got four screws on the underside, and then on the top, these little standoffs that would go onto this board here, they just sheared right off. So there was no resistance when I was actually taking this off, they just sort of slid out. So I don't think that was meant to happen. That must have broken. This is a brand new unit as well, so this must have gotten broken either in manufacturing by screwed on too tightly, which I doubt, but probably just in transit or just over time that cracked. It doesn't really matter, I guess. I mean, it's nice if it's held in place properly, but even if it's not, this is still, this white plastic channel is still going to be held in. How does it actually fit? This way. No, this way. There we go. This white channel here is actually still held in place pretty pretty fine, secured. Well, secured by these three standoffs here, and then also it kind of sits in that groove there. So it's not really going to go anywhere. Case could probably be made. Those two screws are actually quite redundant because they don't need those screws. They could have just used these standoffs and actually just let it sit in place. But it's there, so. It is what it is. But what this actually this disc does is might be a bit hard to see, but it's got these little channels on each of the sides, or well, multiple channels sort of all the way around, and it's quite reflective. So that'll correspond to the LEDs on, on the actual board down the bottom. So on the outside, all of these little bits on the outside are LEDs. So that will shine into this, and then this will just disperse it evenly and then it'll hit this diffuser on the side, which will diffuse it and make it look like it's a lot more LEDs and it's sort of a continuous ring around 
instead of just the whatever amount of LEDs are here, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, then, then the twelve LEDs. I don't know if this board actually comes out. I don't really want to go digging into it too much because it is quite fragile. Oh, actually, I think it will pop out. Okay, cool. So this side here is just it's just the buttons and little holes in there for the microphones. And then the other the other side is just a fancy array of a whole bunch of little bits of plastic just to provide that that tension back after the button is pressed to, to move back into place. So this is all just plastic, ejection molded plastic, and then just um, glued or actually acoustically welded most likely onto the other bit of plastic. So that's the top cover. And then the PCV itself, nice little design on this side. So this black, this black thing here, this is just the foam that actually just provides space and, and holds it all in place. And then on here, we just have four buttons. So as I said, th these buttons just then correspond directly to, to what's on here. It does look like there's a couple of LEDs next to one of these buttons. And then this other button here as well, maybe an LED or something else. It kind of looks like some sort of a photosensitive component, actually. I don't know what that's there for, but so I think this goes like that. So I think this button, no, actually it's gonna be upside down anyway. Yeah, so that'll sit like this, flipped open. So those two LEDs, I think they're gonna be the red LEDs because when you press the, the no listening button, that just turns off the microphone. So I think that, that then turns on the red lights. I think it's red lights or a certain color just to indicate that the device is actually not listening. And then on the other side, that little extra chip that I said here, so it's probably gonna be quite hard to see, but this little bit here is not an LED. It, it looks like some sort of a photosensitive component. And there is actually a little cutout in one of these buttons here. So that little square, square cutout there. So I reckon that's where that's gonna go. And I think that might just be an ambient light sensor. Although I don't know why exactly this would need it, but it does, it does slide in there. And then it's just on, on this button here. So it's on that listen button. I really don't know. If anyone knows what that thing right there is, leave a comment and let us know. Awesome, and then that's kind of that. And then on the other side, we just have in the center, probably the main brain box and a nice sort of thermal compound or thermal, thermal paste there that'll press against this center bit here, which will then transfer the heat from that straight onto the actual um, heat sink. Other than that, we've got some microphones. So there's going to be four microphones around. So these four, one, two, three, four, these guys are going to be microphones. Interestingly done is there's a, there's a through hole on the PCB and they'll actually listen to, to this side here. So they're mounted on the bottom of the PCB, but they listen through the PCB. That then also corresponds to these little, to these little holes here. There's four of these little holes, the microphones go. And then we're just gonna have a bunch of analog to digital converters because all these microphones just record analog sound and this, this thing's gonna work in digital, so it's gonna convert that over. And then a couple of little, these are, these are interesting little, little springs. Let's see if we can get that picked up. These little springs here. And that's most likely just gonna provide the contact between this and whatever it's pressed up against, so I think. Yeah, so I think let's press it straight into this. So this, this whole thing might also just be earthed or, or grounded and act as a sort of a reference as well. But that's interesting, there's quite a few of these around that just press onto that. There might also just not actually be electrical, be some sort of spaces. The designator is a P, so they're all like, this is this is P7, P6. And the designator P on, on PCBs means, means a plug. So I reckon there will be some sort of electrical contact between those as well. And then we just have this ribbon cable up here that connects the two boards together. And then actually it's interesting. So whether there's a speaker. Ah, okay, cool. That, see, the speaker doesn't actually have any connect. Well, I mean, it has a connection, but it doesn't have a little wire and a plug sticking out. So how this speaker actually connects is through these little pins here or these little terminals. So there's just two exposed, two exposed contacts there. 
and then that's going to correspond to an area on the PCB. So the PCB comes in and sits this way. So just underneath, yeah, exactly. There you go. There's going to be the two little springs. So two little springs there. And then as that sits on here, that just presses down against that, that contact and that'll go over to the speaker. So this board here would just be doing most of the amplification and the power processing, so power coming in, amplifying it, going to the speaker. And then this board here is actually what does all the logical and the processing and, and thinking. That's it. So thanks very much for watching. Now you've seen what's inside an Alexa Echo. If you like this video, please do leave a like. It helps out. And if you want to see more of this sort of stuff, then consider subscribing. Thanks very much.